is Barbara Dowdy. I am the assisting minister. I will not be preaching. <laughs> we are we welcome today, and we're happy to have with us Pastor Liz Yates, who will be the preacher presider this morning. Um, just to note that there are announcements in the bulletin. Please read them. Um, one thing to remember: next Saturday is our craft fair and autumn celebration, and just general fun day here at the church. Um, we invite everyone to participate. Is there, are there any other announcements? Is this it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 that's great. Thank okay. you. Um, well, if there's nothing, no other further announcements, let us uh, prepare for worship by listening to the prayer. Okay. Thank you. 
God, the one who forms us. Jesus, who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others in your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, Forgive us, lead us back to you, and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. <laughs>
Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading is from the 32nd chapter of Exodus, beginning at the first verse. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with an evil intent that he brought them out to kill them from the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind. And do not bring disaster to you on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he was planning to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm responsibly. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. We will declare the mighty acts of the Lord, for we proclaim in full God's grace. Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your salvation. That I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We you have sinned as our forefathers did, we have done wrong and dealt wickedly. They made a bull calf at Horeb and worshipped a molten image. Thus they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on the mountains. They forgot God their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt. Wonderful deeds in the land of man, and beautiful things in the Red Sea. So you would have destroyed them had not Moses your chosen stood in the breach to turn away your wrath. From consuming them. 
The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Philippians, beginning at the first verse. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, keep these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, this morning, I don't think we really have any very young Joe Joshua's present, but since I prepared something, I thought it would be good for all of us to hear. So, the reason I brought a picnic basket is because we're talking about a feast. Now, if you say a feast to children, nine times out of ten, if you say, what would you have if you could have anything at the table? It's probably going to be things like goldfish, maybe their favorite fruit, maybe. 
or probably some chocolate or some other type of yummy candy that they might have. Now, one of the things that I wanted to emphasize for the children this morning and for all of us is that God invites every single one of us to his table. Now, last week at Family Faith, uh, uh, if I think about it too hard, I mess it up. I'm, I'm bad. Um, one of my kids, I said, you know, you guys can have, we were talking about Cain and Abel. They picked the story, by the way. They picked all their stories that they hear this year at FFF. But I said, you know, if you have any questions about this story, let me know what it might be. And one of them raises their hand and said, who made God? And I, I mean, you should have seen my face. I was not prepared. <laughs> so... But just think about it. If we have seven-year-olds in our congregations that have those types of questions, there's other people in the world that do too, from seven to 77. So think about it. Those that are at your workplace, those that maybe get along with great, maybe those that you don't, make sure to invite them to your table. Make sure to bring them and share the good news of the gospel with them. Because one of the things that we're going to talk about today is how everyone is invited and how God shares love for his people, no matter who they are. So this week, I want to remind all of you to make sure to open your tables. Listen, we all have to eat, okay? I know you guys are all eating at least something every day. So invite someone to join you, and you know we can make a difference in the lives of those around us, because God loves all of us. So Amen. I'll turn over to Pastor Liz. <laughs> Very well said. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus st. Paul writes us a very welcome letter this week it seems to me like it's a bit of an oasis of peace in the midst of a week far too full of war and violence and terrorism, which continues still this morning, even as we worship. Hamas is wrong with its violence. Gaza is fenced in by Israel with nowhere to go. Paul would understand. He wrote these words from prison. Perhaps we can understand Paul a little better today than ever before. Yet his circumstances did not dim his faith or lead him to despair, but rather to rejoicing and thanksgiving. Paul tells us to guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Jesus got angry, so angry that he made a whip of cords to banish the money changers from the temple. They were people who made God's house a den of thieves instead of a place of prayer. Jesus had compassion for the people because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus went about teaching, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing, but found people who were confused and helpless without a good leader. <clears throat> Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing as he cried up from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He called out to his father in despair. 
So many different ways that we see Jesus, the mind of Christ, as one of us, a real human person who encountered the full range of human experience and emotion. Today we meet Jesus telling a parable about a king who gave a wedding banquet to, for his son. In Luke, this story is told as a story, a parable of grace. But here in Matthew, he tells the story during Holy Week as a parable of judgment. The king sent a slave out to call those who were invited to the banquet, but they wouldn't come. Pure grace was offered to them. Try again, the king said, but they still wouldn't come. They made light of it, and they refused to come. The great preacher Fred Craddock said Matthew knew how easily grace can melt into permissiveness. He knew that for those who presume upon grace, Forgiveness does not fulfill righteousness, but it negates it. But it's a universal invitation to the good and the bad, to everyone, to the marriage feast of the king's son. God, the king, isn't mad at anybody because of his son who by death and resurrection has drawn all creation to himself. God's ready to celebrate. When God's happy, everybody's happy. He invites all to share in his joy. Sadly, the invited would not come. It's free grace, dying love, unqualified acceptance for the fools of the world. The first rejected. More in invitations were met with more rejection, and they treat the king's servants disgracefully, killing some. The king destroyed those murderers with his troops and burned their city. The wedding feast is ready, and the king is determined to celebrate. All those corpses were the people who had a right to be at the royal wedding. But they lack the trust, the faith, that is the only divinely accepted quality needed. Jesus makes clear that good works won't earn us the right to attend the feast, nor will God be so good-natured as to absolve us from having to sit through it if we happen to have other plans. Both are dead wrong. Salvation isn't by works, and the heavenly banquet is not optional. Salvation is by accepting a party already in progress. God has paid for the party at the price of his own death. Only two things count, faith and grace. Outside the party, there's no life. We are still sinners when we are called to trust the invitation. The man without a wedding garment said nothing. He refused any relationship with the king so he accepted the judgment he has chosen. Many are called, good, bad, otherwise, offered heaven for nothing. But few are chosen because you know what many do? They're suspicious about anything that's free. They're afraid because it costs them nothing. And the king sits up there giving heaven to absolutely everybody. Nothing down, 
no interest, no payments, the ultimate triumph. Hell is absolutely unnecessary for anybody. The only catch, you have to be as crazy as God to take the deal, in spite of our instinct to distrust that which is free. You must be willing to believe and the faith to believe is the gift of the Holy Spirit, not a work of ours. Life in the presence of God is beautiful and grace-filled. It's hard to connect that with the week that we have just lived, full of war and threats of war, killing and destruction, deprivation and hopelessness, demands for Gazans to evacuate, but nowhere to go. Many commentators say there's no military solution to what is happening in Gaza and Israel, only diplomacy, seeking justice as it has for the last 75 years. Violence is always wrong, no matter what the reason. Our Lutheran Yagans, that's short for Young Adults in Global Mission, have been sent home as of yesterday. They were there for 20 days. They expected to stay a year. The principal of Talitha Kumi Lutheran School in Beit Jala in Palestine has gone home to Germany for safety. Lutheran friends in Bethlehem and thereabouts are safe. They hear the bombs and the rockets. They're facing food shortages and a very serious situation. The first war since 1973 and 1948. I spoke with Tony Nassar on the phone yesterday and those were things that he told me. And his family is probably about two miles inside of Palestine from Jerusalem in Beit Jala. But as pastors, rabbis, and imams meeting together here in Richmond this week have said, all we can do is lament. Lament those who refuse grace and those who mourn and are in danger. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. That is Psalm 13, this perfect example of lament. Come now to the banquet. Receive Jesus in bread and wine for forgiveness, life, and salvation, and go out to pass grace to all in his name. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Vandy, and I wanted to first thank the Stewardship Committee for and Babs for inviting me to speak today. I also wanted to take a minute to share a little background into how our family became a member of LCS. In March of 2020, we moved from Florida during a very interesting time in history, <laughs> exactly one week before the COVID shutdown. It was a very anxious time for everyone worldwide. During this time, we prayed for God to lead us to a church so we would grow with our young family. And we were also searching for a church preschool. We walked into LCOS and very quickly, we felt very welcomed. It was easy to see right away how the congregation expresses love and compassion to one another and throughout the Chesterfield community. It has been inspiring to see over the past years, the congregation stepping up to the call when we had multiple donation campaigns for a youth director, paying down the mortgage, and maintenance on the building. It has been encouraging to see how during times of need, how members will reach out to others to check on one another when a family member has been hospitalized or just to check on someone when they haven't been at church in a few weeks. In chapter four, the Philippines, verse eight through nine, talks about what is true. Instead of focusing on the world's evil, we are invited to focus on what's honorable and morally excellent. Instead of injustice, we are invited to be those who seek justice and righteousness. This message really allows one to reflect about how they think and how they live. In times of conflict and challenges, people may either isolate themselves, ignore a situation, or rally together to make a positive change in a direction by donating to causes or providing some form of service or volunteer work. Here in Chesterfield, we see many obstacles facing families and individuals of all ages. God has sent us into the community to provide quilts and prayer shawls for people in need, raise money for many causes locally and worldwide, assist with providing meals and Christmas gifts for families in need, and providing lunches for the homeless. We each play a part here at LC West. Just as a pebble creates waves when it's dropped in a pond, acts of kindness ripple outwards, touching other lives and inspiring kindness everywhere the wave goes. In conclusion, I wanted to express my gratitude to the many members that quickly came to introduce themselves on our first day here at LCUS three years ago. The compassionate Giving Tree preschool teachers that expressed love and shared God's message to our two sons, church council for giving me the opportunity to serve, the fellowship committee for allowing me to assist in the many events, and the support we've received from young families and members, especially as we'll be welcoming a baby into our home and the LCS church community in late January. I feel very hopeful about the future here at LCS, as each of us continue to grow as stewards with God's peace with us. I hope and pray that God will continue to guide all of us into giving back to LCS in whatever capacity each of us can, whether it's giving financially to the church, joining an LCS committee, or providing service in some form of church. I'll leave you with the prayer on the stewardship insert. Dear Lord, thank you for showing us by example how you wish to use us to further your mission for our world. Grant us wisdom as we utilize our talent, talents, and treasures for a more just and loving community for all people. Amen. Amen. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, the faith into which we are baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day he rose again. He is ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the transforming power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord. God of grace, hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters, and all the beauty of the natural world, that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all we have made. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving for the goal of peace and prosperity for all. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all experiencing valleys of illness and grief, that they be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks with them. We pray especially for John, Jim, Bud, Rose, Jim, Rosalie, Matthew, Sheila, Darna, Virginia, Kathy, Abby, John, Hudson, Wayne, Jerry, Grayson, and Marge. And for all those whom we keep on our minds and in our hearts, John, Joe, me, Sarah, and Elsie. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this community of believers, that wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy, let their faithfulness, faithful witness guide your church until the day we join them at your heavenly God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our refuge and strength in times of trouble. We cry to you to bring peace in hearts and on the land of all people of your holy land. We pray that violence may cease, mourners may be comforted, and lives may be rebuilt, and your peace may prevail. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Lord, <laughs> 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 We will now receive the offering.
please rise as you are able. Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending gift. Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new, new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to the table. Come, eat, and live. Amen. Mm -hmm.
our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in faith. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.